Hi everybody, Miss Hale here. Um, since I can't be there in class today, I wanted to go over a few things that you need for your lab report. And it's due on Wednesday, so next class. Make sure you spend all day today working on it. Um, and if you have questions, Miss Benson, Mrs. Lejeune, excuse me, will be stopping in to help you. Um, so the first thing I want to go over, um, remember that your procedures um, as well as your introduction are in paragraph form, so you're not making a list. The only thing that should be in a list is your materials, and your procedures need to be past tense, third person, in complete sentences. And there's an example of that on your lab report format if you forget how to do that. Um, so this is what your data table should look like. You should have a title as well as number your data table. Um, your independent variable for your lab should be in the left-hand column with your control groups and experimental groups below. And then your dependent variable should be across the top with your trials and averages um, below that. So for this lab you only had one trial so you won't have as many columns here but you should still um, have the dependent variable across the top. And here is an example in Excel of how you should set up your lab. Um, but you'll notice that this isn't really formatted very well. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select columns A and B and I'm going to merge them together by selecting this little A here. And that's going to merge my cells. So now that's in one cell but I can't read the whole thing so I need to make the columns bigger. So I'm going to take my cursor and I'm going to hold it over the column where one column meets another. And I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it over until I see the whole word. And I can do that for both columns A and B. Okay. So there's my table. Um, and column A can be just a little bit bigger. Okay, so enzyme temperature. And then you'll notice that there's two columns here, but there's only one um, that has words in it. So I'm going to merge that one as well to make it look a little nicer. And the rest of this looks pretty good. The only thing that I need to do now is put some borders around it so that I, when I paste it into my lab report, um, I can see the differences between the different shades. So I'm going to click on here where I have this little box with the dotted lines and I'm going to click all borders. And so that gives me a very basic data table that I can now transfer into my lab report. And so I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But for right now, we're going to go back and we're going to look at the correct format for a graph. So again, you need the graph with the title and a number, so you should have one graph. Um, the dependent variable is um, going to be on the y-axis over here with units, and I did that in the data table as well. Um, and the independent variable goes along the x-axis with units as well. If you need a legend, you can put that on your uh, on the right-hand side. So this is what your graph should look like, basically. Now, remember, if you have categories, you're going to be making a bar graph for your independent variable. So if there's categories for your independent variable, make a bar graph. If there's numbers for your independent variable, make a line graph. And so let's go back to Excel. And here's my um, data table with the units right here in milliliters. So I'm going to select it without selecting the title. And I'm going to go up to, let's see if I can find it, insert. Here I go, insert. And I want a bar graph or column graph, it's called in Excel. Um, so we, we're going to be doing column graphs in Excel which you guys know those as bar graphs, and then XY scatter if you have two numbers. And you can use this one, scatter with smooth lines and markers, and that will be perfect if you have numbers for your independent variable. So I'm going to do column, and I'm going to hit 2D column because that's easier for me to see. And here is my graph. Now this is not the title that I want here. Um, this is what I want for... Um, my y-axis. So I'm going to right-click this and I'm going to hit edit text. I'm going to change this title to graph1 effect 
of temperature on juice production. Now we're a little bit outside of the reporting area. Here we go. So there's the whole graph. Um, I don't need a legend here, so I'm just going to delete that and make my graph bigger. And then I still need, the temperatures here are good, but I need labels for my axes. So I'm going to right click anywhere in the chart, and I'm going to hit, um, oh, actually, I did that wrong. So I'm going to click up here in Excel where it says chart layouts. And you'll notice that if you scroll down, this one, so I scrolled twice, this one has a little legend here, a gray spot here for a title, and a gray spot here for a title. So I'm going to click that one so that I get some access titles. And you'll notice those have popped up. So I'm just going to click them. And on my access title, I'm going to change this one to N to the amount of applesauce. And I need to make sure I put my units, which are milliliters. And then I'm going to change, I'm going to change this axis title to enzyme temperature, so that I know what I'm talking about. And remember, we don't need that legend, so I'm going to delete that one again. So there's my final graph, as well as my data table. Um, and so if you had your lab report, you can just scroll down, and this is a different lab report than what you guys have. So under procedures you're going to put your data. So I'm going to put it right in, right with my lab report. I'm not going to put it on a second page because it should be right in between procedures and conclusions. So I'm going to highlight this, my data table, I'm going to hit control C or you could hit edit copy. And that has copied my data table. So I'm going to go back to my lab report. I'm going to write data and then I'm going to hit control V or edit paste, and there's my lab, there's my data table right in my lab report. And we're gonna do the same exact thing for the graphs. So I'm gonna select my graph, and I'm gonna hit Control C, and I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna hit Control V, and there's my graph right in my lab report. And then you can do things like change the size, etc. So that is how you should set up your data. Um, this is on Edline, so you guys can look at this again if you need more help. Um, then you're going to write your conclusion. So here's some info on your conclusion. The first paragraph is your data analysis. You're going to restate your hypothesis and your problem statement. Um, you're going to say if your hypothesis was supported by your data, did it show your hypothesis to be correct? Or was it rejected? Did, you, did your um, data reject your hypothesis? Did it show that it was incorrect? And it's okay. You don't have to be correct on your hypothesis. That's why it's a prediction. Um, then you're going to relate your data to your hypothesis. And this is a step that lots of people forget. So you're going to make sure that you use the numbers from your um, data in your conclusion. I should see numbers written. Um, and make sure you use units as well. And then you're going to clearly state your conclusion. So maybe you looked at temperature. So you're going to say the hotter the temperature, the more apple juice was made. But make sure you use data to back that up. Then in the second paragraph, you're going to discuss the validity of your data. So how confident are you in your conclusion and your data? Um, was there anything that went wrong in your experiment? Was there anything that went well? Um, and could you make any improvements in the experiment? All of these questions should be answered in your conclusion. And then finally, you're going to tell me what's the big picture in the third paragraph. So how does this experiment relate to the concepts we're studying in class? So you might want to talk about how enzymes work best in one pH or an optimum temperature that's a very small range. Um, and then what additional tests would you like to conduct? Is there any other questions that came up during your experiment? So you're going to want to relate this back to general enzyme function. Um, and what relates to real life here? You could talk about enzyme disorders. You could talk about different enzymes that you have in your body. Um, and how does it relate to you? Um, as well as how does it relate to the rest of the world? So things like lactose intolerance might be something that you want to talk about here. Um, what are some other things in enzymes that enzymes do? And why are enzymes so important? So we're really relating it to the big picture in that third paragraph. So once again, data analysis, where you're really writing data, the validity, and the big picture.
And then I have an example for you guys. So this is from a different lab. But you'll notice how much this person wrote. Um, so this first paragraph is all the background information. And yours is going to be about enzymes and um, what affects enzymes. In the second paragraph of the lab, we have the purpose. That's right here. Then we have the hypothesis. We believe that this was going to happen. Now, they have multiple hypotheses, but you guys are just going to have one. Um, they identify their independent and dependent variables as well as their controlled variables. So those are all in the, in the purpose. That's, a, I mean, excuse me, in the introduction. So that's a perfect introduction. Then they've listed their materials. And notice that they're single-spaced. And here's the procedure. Um, so they did it in past tense, sentences, paragraph form. Um, so this is perfectly done. You can use that as a good example. The data is right in their lab report. It's not on a separate page, printed out. And then we have their conclusion. In the first, notice how they talk about their data. Okay, The volume started at 40 milliliters and ended at 39. So you're going to want to talk about our applesauce. The hot enzyme produced 6 milliliters of applesauce, but the cold enzyme only produced 3. That would be something that would be in your conclusion. Um, the data did not support hypothesis. They have it as a sentence, and they use because, and then I see more data. That's really, really good. Um, and then they have an overall conclusion statement. Now, your statement could be a little better than this one, um, but that isn't one example of what you could write. Then they talk about their validity and different things that went wrong in their experiment or things that went well. And then how does the lab relate to real life? So that's really where you're going to talk about the big picture, enzymes in general, how it relates to you, what other questions you might have, etc. Um, so that's your lab report. Remember, it's due on Wednesday. And if you have any questions, um, you can see me after school or Ms. Benson should be in class um, for at some point today to answer some questions that you might have. So start that peer editing on your intro and your procedures and then get to work on the rest of your lab report. Thanks, guys.